Pivoting. Pivoting to the rear foot clockwise if we're an orthodox fighter. If we're southpaw, same mechanics, but counterclockwise. However, big however, this is not the same as reversing the process if I'm pivoting um, the back foot forward uh, counterclockwise as an orthodox fighter. This is different than what I'm going to teach you, which is this. The mechanics are different, and the way you teach it is different. In an actual fight, it's going to look a little bit more like this. Hopefully. It'll be a little bit more active. Okay? But to, to learn it, first you have to be able to step very slowly, then a little bit more at a time, right? You don't, you don't learn this overnight. But let's assume that you're proficient enough that you know how to step, you know how to step to both ways, uh, you know how to step front and back. You need to at least be able to do that. You need to have your stance down perfectly, at least know what's comfortable. You need to be more than an abject beginner, right? Coaches don't usually teach this very well. They usually get one of two things wrong. First thing would be if you're like one-on-one -on -one with a coach, they break it down into too many steps because it's very individualistic. Like my pivot will not have the same metrics as your pivot because I need to step differently based on my limb lengths, my stance width. Um, my body weight will shift differently based on where I have my fat distributed. There's tons of things. More commonly though, is you'll have either an incompetent coach or coaches that are in a big group and they'll just show you like, this is what it's supposed to look like. You'll be like, okay, that's a pivot, but they won't tell you how to arrive there with a step-by-step -step uh, process. It's very um, trial and error. And a lot of it will be trial and error, but you can break it down into like a four-step process, three, four-step process that really facilitates like the learning of the muscle memory to a point by which you're proficient enough at the movement to start practicing without learning something that would be called like a, a mind or movement virus, which is, many of you might have heard that like unlearning and relearning something correctly is a lot harder than um, learning something correct the first time. And this happens a lot in boxing because things that work at the beginning better than doing it properly um, get you somewhere, but then eventually it holds you back. So then you got to redo everything. So you don't want to do that. So the very first thing is just getting in your, your stance, right? Finding your stance. You're going to want to have your knees bent slightly. For the movement, you're not necessarily going to have to have like a range of motion while you're moving with your knees up and down. However, you need to be bent just a tiny bit because standing up straight, the balance is really off, right? The taller an object is uh, based on how uh, compared to like the width of its base, the, if it's too narrow, it's less stable. So you want, you want to be a little bit squat, just like when you're going to take steps forward or move back or move to the side, right? You need to bend a little bit just to push off and get a little bit more, more to the ground. This too will have a, a range between fighters. Some are a little bit more upright, some are a little bit more squat. <clears throat> so you're getting your stance. The most important thing to focus on, because you're actually going to mark it, is where your front foot and your back foot are pointing. You like lift up your hands like robot arms to establish the angle, right? You realize how how far you are, but you're not actually going to do the pivot like this because it'll throw your balance off. You're just doing this to establish where you are and then you mark it off, right? So either you get like a big Sharpie or like tape and you put it around like an inch or two of, in front of your front foot and make it arced like a, an arch so that you have the orientation correct. Because if it's just straight, you, you'll, you'll see, you'll, you'll, it's less precise. And the same thing with the back foot, you're going to have to make three total marks to do this properly, but those two are first. So first you do that, you're in your stance, right? And from there, you're gonna actually try to establish where you're gonna put your back foot first. Because when you're breaking it into, into a step-by-step -step process, it doesn't happen all, all in one motion. It's like a step and then slide to recover, right? It's step, slide to recover. And I'll explain to you why this is easy why this naturally aids you. You'll probably feel it if you try it. But the reason why this uh, is helpful to do it this way is because 
you automatically know if you fucked up. If I step, in this case, I step too far back, right? So now if I recover to my new orientation, I'm totally square. So I, I fucked up, right? I realized that um, my feet are not correct. I, I moved too far back. If I move too far that way, swinging around, I come and I, and I switch and my feet are right directly in, in, in front of each other and they're, they're too close. So you instantly start realizing where you're fucking up and then you just narrow the range of, of error, the margin of error until you, you get it right. Some common mistakes um, that people make when they first learn to pivot, probably the two or three biggest ones is, one, they just kind of swing their leg and fall into place. It's very, it's um, not very proficient and um, it's slow and your balance is off. The second is they, they make a lot of mistakes, like if they stepped incorrectly like this, so then they have to recover with another step, and then they step wrong again, so they gotta fix it. So they're not pivoting, they're just shuffling really in, in um, really inefficient ways, right? And then there's like other variations of like kicking too far back and and like stepping like this and, and balance errors and, and all this. But getting to why there's like a natural part of your physiology that aids you with this is you'll notice once you get it closer to where you should be, to where like if you just step and then turn your foot, you're in where you should be in this new orientation. And you know, you only wanna start, when, when you're pivoting in the beginning, you wanna maybe pivot like 30 degrees, very, you don't wanna pivot like all the way, right? You wanna do it small first. Once you're trying to find that to where you're gonna mark off your tape with where your foot actually lands, you're gonna discover, especially beginners, um, will have very poor mobility in their hips and their adductors. And usually, the more new you are at a sport that requires mobility, the less mobile you will be. Sometimes if you come from another sport, this is not the case, but typically speaking, this is correct. And this will help you because as it scales to further and further pivots, um, your mobility will increase. And at the beginning, you're gonna step here and you're gonna immediately find that I want to complete the motion. My, my front ankle wants to slide because I'm very tight. When I'm here, my adductors and my hips, they're tight. It just wants to, it wants to slide, right? So let's assume now I've got, I've got my, my two markers and now I've figured out that this is about where my third one should be. So I, I, I've marked it off, right? Maybe a little bit more like this. Yeah, that's, that would be perfect for me, right? So I've marked that off. So now I know I'm gonna step here. I keep practicing that. Just practice the step, get the balance down. And then as you'll see though, is your, your front, your front uh, ankle and knee, it just wants to come with you. There's like really no way to avoid it. You might even be so tight that you can't help it, which in that case, you're just gonna wanna do an even, even tighter pivot, like just very, very tiny, very, very tiny. Yeah, if you, if you have to, like 20 degrees, whatever it is. But you scale that as you go up because you'll get more loose if you're also doing mobility work and uh, learning properly. And then eventually, instead of it being like this really slow process that you're trying to figure out, it just turns into one motion. You just, you're, you let your front leg just kind of come with you. And then eventually, hopefully, you're able to do it while you're actually in, uh, in motion, changing directions, you know. Right? And that's, uh, that's really it. From there, it's trial and error. And I find this much better. The people I've taught this to learn much quicker than athletes that I learned alongside um, that were just told to, this is what it looks like, go go learn it. Um, and also quicker than the guys I knew that had one-on-one -on -one consultations with, with like really good advanced coaches that broke it down to so many minor steps. Like we're going to shift your weight like this and turn 28.6 degrees to the South and, uh, hold your hand during the equinox and twist your ankle to the Mayan calendar. You know, like it's too much. You, you can't focus on all that stimulus as a beginner, but you need that happy middle ground where you can scale it to a step-by-step -step process, but also maintain um, some 
very poignant basic cues. And because this has like a tactile feedback in your in your loins, <laughs> in your crotch, uh, it's very hard to ignore. I mean, it's it's harder to ignore it and fuck it up than it is to actually go with the motion. So if you forget the mechanics too, it'll teach you, oh right, I'm just supposed to go where I'm supposed to, where I feel like going, right? And this works whether I'm pivoting just a little bit or very much. That's about it.